हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम टू द नाइन्थ एपिसोड ऑफ एन इंटरव्यू विद मिस्टर राजेश तलवार सो द बुक इन डिस्कशन टूडे इज द जुडिशरी ऑन ट्रायल सो मिस्टर तलवार द नेम इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग सो लेट स्टार्ट विद द क्वेश्चन दैट वी ऑलवेज आस वॉट इज दिस बुक अबाउट हाई अनन्या इज गुड टू बी विद यू अगेन दिस इज माई सेकेंड बुक पब्लिश क्वाइट अ लॉन्ग टाइम अगो and uh, it's very special for me uh, the title the judiciary on trial this was not my title of first choice uh, initially i was thinking of publishing it under the title courting injustice the terrible truth about our courts uh, but as things worked out uh, my publisher preferred the second title and uh, so we went with that and uh, but it's special to me So is there a reason as to why this book is so special to you and given that it is just your second book that was published was it you know difficult to publish it uh my first book uh, i think we mentioned uh, we discussed it in an early episode uh, making your own will uh, was a best seller by indian standards it was sold all over on railway stations flat uh, airports and uh, uh, because it was so successful Uh, in a way it became easier for me to find a publisher uh, but it was still difficult uh, the person the publisher who had published my first book he wasn't willing to go with it because he said uh, he didn't think the market prospects were very good uh, so i had to find somebody else uh, i was preferring a paperback publisher but eventually i had to settle for a hardback publisher and uh, uh, so this was not a very big publisher Uh, but a reasonably important publisher uh, based in Darya Ganj and uh, based on the fact that i was teaching at university based on the fact that i had written extensively in newspapers and journals and based on the fact that uh, my first book was a best seller uh, i didn't find it very difficult to find a publisher uh, but at the same time i had to knock on a few doors uh, i spoke with penguin I spoke with uh, UBS before I decided to go for a library publisher and uh, I think they were not uh, too keen to publish it because they were looking for a bigger name and I was a young lawyer at the time That's quite nice actually but uh, still doesn't answer my question why is the book special to you uh, As a young lawyer working in the courts in Delhi uh, there were many things which disturbed me and uh, Uh, so i wrote about them in newspapers uh, but i wanted to take out a book which spoke about all the terrible things that happened in the courts and how we could possibly redress it so it was something that uh, that troubled me deeply i wanted it to be shared uh, in fact uh, interestingly enough uh, even after i had signed the agreement with the publisher you know publishers sometimes they have a schedule and they take a long time to publish a book uh, so 3 months later i said what's happening they said oh we are still working on it 6 months later i said what's happening they said we are still working on it 8 months later they were still working on it and then i couldn't bear it not being published anymore so i told myself okay whenever it will be published it will be published let me take it out immediately in some form or the other at that time i used to be associated with some voluntary groups and they used to publish these pamphlets so i knew the process by which pamphlets were published and i thought okay let me publish my book as a very thick pamphlet uh, so i went to chowri bazaar i bought the paper i went to the printer at that time you didn't have all this digital printing this is quite some time ago i got everything set uh, published i believe a thousand copies and sent uh, a hundred or so to different newspapers magazines i just wanted to get it out of my system it was unbearable for me the thought that why is this delay happening uh, i suppose publishers never realize how much angst they cause authors uh, who are keen to see their book in print and so although i had a contract the publisher assured me they were going to publish it soon uh, the delay was getting to me i couldn't bear it so i went ahead and published it Of course that had a different title. Uh the title subtitle was The Terrible Truth About Our Courts and it spoke about the terrible truth in Indian court system. Uh So yes, I self published. 
before it came out so you sent a lot of copies to different newspapers did anybody respond to it or perhaps reviewed it uh no uh except for one so you can say if i sent 100 copies 99 people did not reply one person replied in this regard i should say that indians are like the americans because as authors will find out that if you write to indian publishers or indian literary agents who are just emerging quite often they don't respond uh, if you write to americans american publishers they also don't respond uh, but if you write to the british they are very polite the english they will always respond so that's very interesting for me uh, so uh, so i sent off all these copies i thought hindustan times times of india it was published in the form of a pamphlet so maybe they they, they just threw it away uh, they didn't even bother to look at it uh, so out of 100 roughly 99 people did not reply but the 100th person replied that was mr kushwant singh okay so that took an interesting turn so uh, did kushwant singh you know agree to write about it uh well as i said you know most uh, almost everybody didn't respond to it except for the uh, mr kushwant singh one day i got home and my dad said uh, there's a postcard from you uh, from kushwant singh so i said that's very interesting uh so it was a postcard and the postcard said dear rajesh uh i'm just recovering from cataract surgery uh but i've had a chance to look at your uh book uh, and since it's not available in bookstores it's not available um uh, in the market i can't really review it uh and then he signed off and then as a ps as a postscript he said i've read a couple of chapters now uh, before i managed to send this to the post i will review it okay so um, what was mr kushwan singh's review like at that time kushwan singh used to take out the column uh, i think in the hindustan times with malice towards one and all so uh, two weeks later i was wondering where he would review it how he would review it uh, he opened the column with a discussion on that book uh the self published version uh which was titled sorry state of law and justice and uh, kushwan singh himself used to be a lawyer and he had a terrible experience so he could identify with many of the things he said when i was a lawyer many of the things which mr talwar is writing about used to happen and it's very sad that uh things have not improved and uh, then he went on to discuss the book and he recommended that it be read widely he said it deserves to be read widely and uh, uh so it was a lengthy review uh, it was fulsome praise and it uh, immediately came to the attention of the legal fraternity so i had a small legal office and suddenly i had clerks working with supreme court judges who were telephoning me and saying are you mr rajesh talwar did you write this uh, mr kushwan singh has written about it uh, could we have a copy of this book uh, so i was mailing it to people uh, of course this was the self published version so finally uh, did the book sell well and did you earn a good amount for it uh, well interestingly uh, the version which i self published that gained a lot of traction possibly even more than the hardback version uh because at the time when i uh self published in pamphlet form it was a very thick pamphlet uh i had given a post box number because i didn't want to give my own no- home address i had given a post box box number of uh, some small voluntary group uh where people could write to uh the next time i met some people uh from that voluntary group they said listen our post box is flooded uh it's full of hundreds of letters so they had brought all those letters with themselves and they gave me those letters there were letters from all over the country there were even letters from nepal from sri lanka people who had not read my pamphlet uh, but who had read kushwan singh's review because uh, it was possibly better to get one review from kushwan singh than three or four reviews from lesser known people 
because that column of his was translated into I don't know 14 15 Indian languages it was syndicated to dozens of newspapers uh, so the response was immense uh, and people spoke about their own troubles about their own difficulties with the justice system they wanted to get hold of a copy some were just you know uh, they were just feeling good that somebody has talked about uh, the terrible truth of our justice system and uh, so that uh, uh, gained a lot of publicity but I should mention the difference you know between paperback publishers and hardback publishers my publisher was essentially a library publisher so uh, when I told him that listen this is Kushwan Singh's review do you want to mention it on the cover uh, they said no 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 we would prefer if you get a high court judge to do a uh, introduction or a supreme court judge uh, because they were looking that this is going to go to libraries so uh, so it came out in an impressive looking tome uh, it did well within the library circuit uh, but uh, uh, it was not a bestseller uh, in terms of earning money uh, it's interesting I would say that in a way I did not earn money and in a way I earned a lot of money okay so that was a bit confusing what do you mean by you earned a lot of money but you didn't earn a lot of money uh, I would say uh, in terms of actually uh, the sales to the libraries and uh, the income uh, to the publisher and the royalties which I received they were not very much uh, there's a saying that only a fool ever wrote but for money uh, and I would say that's a very foolish saying that only fools write only for money and if you write only for money your, your writing is probably not worth very much because if you are a genuine writer there are other forces which compel you to write than uh, lucre or uh, money return uh, but in another way I earned a lot of money much much more than I could have anticipated uh, because a year down the road uh, there was a British Chevening scholarship to study at universities in England. Uh, so I applied as a young lawyer and uh, I remember going for the interview at the British Council. Uh, at that interview, I submitted this book as part of my CV. I had two published books and I submitted both of them. The first was of course a How to Guide, which didn't matter very much with the academic authorities who were interviewing me but the second book uh, the ambassador was interviewing me or maybe it was the first secretary and as soon as I entered the interview room he had he was sitting there with a copy of my book open and he passed it around to the other committee members I think the National Human Rights Commission chairman and the National Minorities Commission chairman and he passed it around and he said you know he just nodded his head uh, so uh, I can say that there were other factors but probably the book sealed the scholarship for me so coming back to the book itself part one of the book is titled the dramatis personae so what is this about uh, yes uh, the dramatis personae are the people who are found in every district court in the country uh, those are the lawyers the judges the court clerks the touts, the uh, the people who stamp documents, uh, the witnesses who appear. So it's a discussion of all these various characters, and uh, uh, so it talks about, for example, some of the clerks. Uh, when I entered the courts, when I started practice, I was shocked by the amount of corruption in the courts because all the clerks would be taking money to do anything you know just to uh, give a date just to uh, send some summons uh, money was exchanging hands for everything uh, so uh, the trial courts there was rampant corruption uh, and you could say even that corruption was institutionalized and for every small thing money uh, money transaction took place at that time of course uh, payments were less uh, but now so maybe the rate has gone up uh, but it was uh, shocking that the justice system should be uh, fueled by corruption to be full of corruption and uh, uh, 
the most shocking thing is for example that there were cases uh, which were filed under the prevention of corruption act uh, where a public servant accused of a bribe of taking a bribe is prosecuted and in those cases also the lawyers would be paying bribes to the clerks uh, and this bribe would be paid often very much under the nose of the judge uh, so uh, so i sp speak of this corruption i speak of the touts uh, if you enter a trial court somewhere in uh, for example delhi or in uh, some other district in kanpur lucknow you'll find that uh, there are these people who stamp documents uh, so i spoke about how very often people just stamp these documents routinely there's no verification there's one person who has many touts who are manning different you know booths so that they can stamp more documents earn more money uh, then i write about the crumbling infrastructure of the courts uh, i write write about the witnesses uh, in india things change very slowly so only last year i heard that supreme court is saying that when there is an accident victim he should be treated at once they should not wait for uh, the police report to be written out now this was something 20 years ago uh, why is action being taken so late why is the pace of reform so slow uh, so uh, the book is meant to reach the, a wider audience so all these different characters are discussed so you told us about the witnesses and the witnesses have a character in the court so can you tell us about the witnesses uh, there are two or three essays on the witnesses but let me just highlight some of the things uh, i speak about the case of the reluctant witness the case of the reluctant witness is why witnesses are reluctant to come to the courts and i speak about about how there is a witness to a crime to an accident when he comes to the court he just has to spend the entire day there he is given hardly any money to come to the court to testify he is harassed uh, he has to go to the police station again and again uh, he does, he gets minuscule diet money there is no proper waiting room he is just standing in the court he is losing money if he is a you know somebody on a daily wage he has to he is losing his daily wage to come to the court now you could say that it's his civic duty to come and uh, he shouldn't expect anything but that would not be fair we need to provide the witnesses with some comfort with a place to sit we need to free them in good enough time uh, we need to treat them with respect so that's one aspect which is dealt with you know the case of the reluctant witness uh there is another aspect of the witness and that is that a lot a lot of witnesses are stock witnesses they are not actually people who actually witnessed a crime they are just produced by the police to support their case these are stock witnesses and in this context there's a famous case of uh, mr paniwala mr paniwala was a man who sold aerated drinks in darya ganj and he is used to sell these aerated drinks used to make a little bit of money and darya ganj police used to use him as a stock witness for many crimes they would just get him and say okay you have to say this 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 and he became an expert he would testify but uh, over the years his fortunes increased and he began to operate a small business and then a bigger business and then he was running a proper business but the police still said oh this is a very good stock witness and they would still force him to come to testify in trials so finally he got sick of it and he filed a writ petition in the supreme court in which he said listen i am being harassed i am being implicated in false cases because i am refusing to give perjured testimony any more and the supreme court said what proof do you have and as proof he produced hundreds of summons yet intelligently enough kept all those summons so you have for example you know the famous crime fiction writer agatha christie where hercule poirot uh, he appears in many uh, crime scenes by coincidence so he is there somewhere and a crime happens and he solves the crime but mr paniwala and other stock witnesses they are much ahead of hercule poirot they are present in thousands of cases hundreds of cases they are appearing every third day and testifying yes i was there at this murder i was there at this accident and these are all false testimonies so it's a complete mockery of justice uh, so justice krishna ayer who you know heard the case uh, which became famous as the paniwala case he said this is just simply shocking and uh, of course he censored the police but 
He did not ask for the cases to be reopened. Maybe the judgment stopped short of that. Who knows what testimony was given, what innocent person was convicted on the basis of that perjured testimony. And the thing is that this is not something unusual, this is commonplace. And this is shocking for young lawyers who say, oh really, this happens. A person was not there and he is giving you know, false testimony at the behest of the police. And the senior lawyers at the trial court, they just laugh and they say, you are just joined the court, this is routine. This happens all over the country. So, a uh, justice system needs to get rid of these stock witnesses. And part of the reason why these stock witnesses are there, because the genuine witnesses don't want to come. And they don't want to come because their life is made such a... They are harassed so much. It's so difficult. They have to go again and again. They have to lose an entire working day. They are treated with disrespect. There's one other aspect of this witness thing, and that is the recording of the testimony. The trial court judges, they are so overworked. Uh, it was shocking for me that sometimes they want to, you know, dispose of cases. So there's a witness being examined by the judge and uh, he's writing down what the witness is saying. And the clerk is, one of his clerks who sits to his right side is examining some other witness who is also writing down something. And the questions are not being uh, written down, uh, you know, the question and then the answer is just a statement. So a lot of subtlety is gone. It's very rough and ready kind of recording. Uh, and this is the way in which evidence is recorded. Uh, it's uh, uh, completely ad hoc. It's very, very unsubtle. Uh, it's being done under pressure of work. Uh, the judges don't have time. They want to dispose of more cases. Uh, there's an avalanche of cases. Uh, judges are referred to as date-giving machines. Because on the one hand, they are dealing with, you know, they are recording testimony in this ad hoc fashion. In the other hand, they are just giving date after date after date in so many cases. So the Sunny Diol character, when he says, Tariq pe, Tariq pe, Tariq, he is just telling you the truth about the Indian justice system, the terrible truth about the Indian justice system.